I met with a um, traditional voyager, a navigator, and I asked him from from uh, the Federic from Marshall Islands. I asked him, how is it that his people, or our, our ancestors, found this their way in this vast ocean called the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is about 160 million square kilometers of water. Atolls about less than five meters above sea level. How did his ancestors find it? And what kind of training do you have to go through today to find that? So he told me a story about when he was little maybe between five, seven, maybe eight, a little bit older than that, he would be taken out, young boys would be taken out in dugout canoes to the ocean and thrown out. And the elders would say to them, can you feel land? And although he, they spent most of the time enjoying and laughing and playing and swimming, by the time they got cold because they've just been swimming for so long, they didn't understand what the elders were trying to teach them they would say yes, and the elders would bring them into the canoes. As they grew older, the training got harder because they got taken out further and further into the deep ocean until you could not see land at all. And when they were thrown, they were asked to consider the central question. Can you feel land in ocean or in liquid? And they began to read and understand the language of ocean, of how to feel land in ocean. And I think this story is quite critical when we are considering our relationship with the natural world. What does it mean to reconnect again and to find land and therefore each other? Um, so he said the instinct of survival meant that you had to create a sense and a reading of the, a dynamic um, system consistently. So it got me thinking that today, considering the kinds of crises that we're faced with, the multitude of crises, the poly crisis, new word that is now looks at our, the confluence of the multitude of crises that we're faced with, the pandemic, the, uh, which is a health crisis, the um, biodiversity crisis, the climate emergency, and how it, the confluence of that is replicating itself across our political, social, economic systems. We're now in this poly crisis. But what, it, what does it mean? It means that we need new senses to navigate how we connect with each other as people and be in kinship with each other, but more importantly, how we are in kinship with the natural environment and the world. This is a proposition that I think people should consider. The idea of immersion into ocean um, and learning a new language with new um, senses. For Pacific people, the seafloor is considered the mat of life. The ocean is our mother and the seafloor is a mat of life. What does it offer in terms of wisdom, in terms of spirituality? The ocean for us is also our gateway between the past, our present, and our future. It is where our ancestors reside, shapeshift, and visit us through dreaming at night. It is a very powerful, but we need to seek its wisdom. All too often in our daily world, we view this natural world only as commodities. Today, we look at the bottom of the sea floor in terms of its value in blue-green min minerals that could help us in deal with a climate crisis, this green climate transition. So we need these new senses to navigate the complexities of a crisis that we are faced with today. Our ways of working, our ways of relationship, we can no longer be silent to each other or to the natural world. All of these crises are teaching us fundamental lessons about what it means to be in relationship with each other and with the natural world. They are 
very stark reminders of how far we are in terms of having to balance our relationship with each other. The fact that we're still seeing these kinds of unimaginable poverty, inequality. The richest people profited and gained why people lost their jobs and loved ones. But the human spirit of endeavor and hope remains beating quite loudly. But I think we need new senses.